Hello, welcome to Cal Poly's Cal State Apply tutorial series. In this video, we will be discussing the high school coursework entry specifically for language other than English and math. Why are we giving language other than English and math its own video? Because these two subject areas are especially complicated. They are the two that you are allowed to potentially use middle school coursework for. They are the two that have some very delicate validation built into them. They are the two we often see AP test scores used for, college coursework used for, and we see a huge volume of errors in these two subject areas specifically. So we wanted to create a video to break down all the different ways that you can meet your area E, your LOT, or your area C, your math coursework requirements, and the proper ways to enter that, and some of the common mistakes that we see so that you can avoid them in your application. Let's dive right in. So for middle school coursework, a few pointers. You're going to enter in the courses under the appropriate grade. 7th and 8th grade are an option in the drop-down menu. However, you will put it under your 9th grade school. You do not need to enter in your middle school as a school attended. And you'll put the 9th grade year as well. There's no ability to go further back in time. Perfectly acceptable. So you can see here that I started Algebra 1 in 8th grade, and I continued on into Geometry in 9th grade. That allows me to use that coursework. Same thing for Spanish. I began Spanish 1 in 8th grade. I continued on to Spanish 2 in 9th grade. Had I repeated either one of these courses in 9th grade, that voids your ability to use that middle school coursework. For middle school coursework, another thing to remember is that if your middle school stretched only the courses across two years, so sometimes we see in Algebra 1A and Algebra 1B, you can't get two years of credit. Uh, for the same course, essentially. You need to merge that into one year of Algebra 1 credit. If you just tested straight into Geometry or to Algebra 2 or to Spanish 3, whatever, from ninth grade, you didn't actually take the classes in middle school, you do still want to put in some placeholder courses, but you'll put pass, pass instead of the grades so that you can still get the proper number of years in that given subject area. So LOAT is different than some of the other courses in that it has different levels of, of credit that you can achieve. Let me show you an example of how this can kind of look. So if you're in California, your high school has an A through G course listing on UC doorways. You can look it up. So when we go to area E, here's all the foreign language courses that this school offers. And here's their respective LOAT levels. And so this means the year's worth of credit that you get for taking that class. So if I took just this one year of French, uh, French 2, I'm getting two years worth of load credit. If I'm a native Spanish speaker and I take just this one year, this one course, it's a load level 4 course. I am entitled to four years of foreign language credit. However, the computer's not reading course titles. You need to tell it how many years you have. So the way that we achieve this is by entering in some placeholder courses. We want to differentiate the names, the different titles, so it's not reading as a re repetition, right? So you'll see I put in the course that I took and the grades that I received, but to make sure it lands and adds up to four years, I'm putting in three placeholder courses. But I'm not just putting pass as the grade, right? I don't want to incorrectly affect my GPA. I just want to get the semester count to be accurate. So when I put this in here, and then later I'll assign all these rows to area E in my A through G matching tile. But right here, this is one, two, three, four. So I really want to point that out. Pay special attention to the load level that you deserve by taking that course and manually enter these in. This also counts for if you're taking college level courses, all California community colleges also have a UC Doorways A through G page that you can reference. Let's look at Cuesta Colleges. We're going to go down to area E. Here's all their foreign language courses. So if I took just this French 2 course at Cuesta College, this is a low level 3 course. So I will put this French 2 course in my college coursework section, right? But I also need to make sure that I have included two other years so that it ends up adding up to three at the end of the day. So the computer knows to give you a year's worth of credit for one semester of college level coursework, but it doesn't know that this is a low level three. So this is where I would come back over to my high school coursework. I would put low level one, low level two, 
and then my course is going to live in college coursework on your A through G matching page. Once you assign all of those to area E, you want to make sure that it lands at being three years. Now let's talk about how the A through G matching page can help you check your work. So I go into my update A through G matching. Let's pretend I am using college coursework to meet that requirement. I go down here to my Santa Barbara City College course and I have it assigned here to area E. However, when you go to your summary page, you see that it now only says one year. But if I took this French 104, I refer to UC Doorways, I see that at Santa Barbara City College French 104 is a low level four course. That means that I'm entitled to four years of foreign language course credit. But when I go to A through G matching, I'm only seeing one year. That means I need to put in some placeholder courses so that this equals the low level that I'm entitled to. Also, let's pretend I'm just using a high school course to meet my area E. I just took Spanish three in ninth grade. When you put in just that one course of Spanish three and you go back to your summary, this is where things get especially tricky because it looks like you have those three years of, of credit that's validated in there. But as a best practice, we never want to rely on built-in validation to get the credit that we are entitled to. We always want to make sure that it is physically in the application with years assigned to the appropriate A through G area. We want to make sure that no matter where it goes, we're getting that credit. So best way to remedy this is to add those placeholders in as we demonstrated earlier. Let me show you what this could look like. So. If I go to High Tech High and starting in ninth grade, I took Spanish three, then I need to make sure that I have two years of placeholders. I would have a low level one and a low level two. They can be in the same grade or in different grades. It doesn't matter. But either way, you'll put in your area E markers and you'll save and go back to your summary and you'll see that it still says three. So sometimes students are concerned when they put in that Spanish three initially and they say, oh, it gives me three years. If I put in two placeholders, it's going to give me five and that's going to look incorrect. The system knows to cap you. So it's not going to give you extra years that you don't deserve. Even with those two courses in there, it still stops you at just the three. So th that's the way we want you to do this. We don't want you to rely on the validation built into Cal State Apply for coursework whether it's high school or college, you want to make sure that you are physically entering in as many lines as you deserve years of load or math coursework. Now let's switch gears and talk specifically about math coursework. So here I have three years of high school coursework. We're going to pretend I started an algebra two in ninth grade. So, you know, presumably I've done algebra one and geometry in middle school, but let's say I only put in my algebra two, my pre-calc and my stats, just those three courses, right? Let's go to AG matching and look, it's giving you five years of area C math coursework. The validation is built into the application, but locally we don't have that. So when we are adding up your, your years of math coursework, this is going to show us just three years. However, you know, if you've done middle school algebra one and geometry, you are entitled to five years. You should have it. We need you to manually enter in that geometry or that algebra one, either your grades or pass pass. So let's say that I have gone back and I have added in my algebra one and my geometry. I've physically entered in all five years of math coursework. You go back to A through G matching and it still says five. So it didn't, you know, add in two more and give you seven. It was still reflecting reality and still capping as it should. So that's what we want you to do. We want you to actually put in all of your coursework and don't rely simply on the validation built into the application. If you are using an AP score to test out of an A through G requirement, you want to enter that score in the standardized test section and you don't want to put it in high school coursework. You don't need to make up placeholders. You're just going to put it in here. For example, if I already took the AP Chinese Language and Culture test, 
and I scored a qualifying score of 3, 4, or 5, that allows me to meet the minimum requirements for Area E, two years of foreign language credit. If you're not sure which test scores are acceptable to test out of an A3G requirement, please refer to the CSU handbook. You can see they have a chart here with every A through G area and at the top, which AP or IB exams and which qualifying scores are acceptable. So you can always refer to this. Keep in mind that test scores cannot be used to gain additional consideration in our process. And I'll just condense these for right now. But you'll see, although right here it says one year, if I go to the summary page, it has two years here. So the system knows that an AP score of a 3, 4, or 5 is enough to meet your two-year requirement. Once you go putting in, you know, four years of, of coursework, it will void that test score because it's one or the other, right? Not both. But if you put in just that test score under a standardized test, you come through here, you should see it say two years under Area E, and it should automatically fill in that Area E marker for you. If you have any additional questions about how to enter in your math or language other than English coursework, please don't hesitate to reach out to our office. We're happy to assist you and confirm that your application is filled out accurately. Thanks so much, and we wish you the best of luck.